Hey Eurovision fans, welcome back to my channel. This is Rebecca and I am reacting to Eurovision 2019 music videos. Now this video today comes with a disclaimer. This is not my first time hearing this song. I had made a reaction video for the Netherlands earlier this week and for whatever reason it just, just the recording was awful. I could not get the audio and the video to sync. And because I'm not a professional, I just had to scrap it. Um, I toyed around with the idea of just not posting a video at all for the Netherlands because I didn't want to create a second reaction video that wasn't an actual um, real reaction. Um, I thought about trying to find different ways to salvage it and just produce a video with really awful sound, but I, I, I couldn't even get that to work. So here I am. I didn't want to leave the Netherlands out of the loop this year because I know it's um, it's among the top for everybody and I just it just felt weird. Um, so here I am. <laughs> this will be my second time hearing the Netherlands song. So with that said, this is Duncan Lawrence. The song is called Arcade and let's listen together. Thankfully, I don't remember a lot of the things I said the first time around. Style-wise, I really like this. At the beginning, it's got kind of a lo-fi, scratchy type of sound to it. And then it seems really polished for the rest of the video, which is an interesting choice. He has a really nice voice. I could not keep my eyes open underwater for like, oh. Water and I have issues. I like fire. Water, not so much. His falsetto is really solid. Um, it doesn't sound weak, it doesn't sound forced. He just flips back and forth really easily between his chest voice and his falsetto. I really like that. I hope that his live vocals um, are as carefree and that having that audience in front of him doesn't kind of change the way he interprets it too much. Sometimes um, if you know people are voting for you and consuming your art as you are presenting it, it, it can change like just how you, how you show yourself to people. See, I never noticed all the other people before the first time I saw it. They don't feature in this at all, but for that shot, there's just like he's surrounded and he seems so alone for most of it. Even though um, on some of those higher notes when he flips his voice, he doesn't quite land in the center of the note. That's almost kind of charming and it, it fits the song really well. If it were too polished, it would seem less real. And there's these people. What are the people for? Someone tell me. Also, there's a lot of crying in Eurovision this year. I get the state of things. Um, it is interesting how that's one of the trends that has kind of come out of this year at Eurovision. A lot of songs with crying. I do love how it comes back down at the end. Um, and yeah, we end in the fetal position, almost like he's returning. All right, guys, so that was the Netherlands. Like I said, I know that this is a favorite for a lot of people. I think it's a good song. It's not one of my favorites. Um, it's definitely one that is solidly sits in the top third, I would say. It's very modern. Um, it's, it's very meaningful to some people. But especially the first time around hearing it, not knowing any of the context behind the words, uh, his own experience, why he wrote the piece, um, the, the visual of the music video just did not sync up with the song to me. Obviously the theme of loving you is a losing game. It's a song about lost love, but just having him in the water the whole time, it kind of seemed to keep him in one one spot. Now, like, 
like I pointed out this time, there's these other shots with people. There's a couple of shots of him out of the water. I don't quite get what that's about. Second thing, before I forget, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of Eurovision fans really dislike seeing reactors react to the video because that's not what's going to be on stage in Eurovision. I get that. Um, having a music video that's not a live performance does color my opinion of the song itself. But my thought is um, the delegation has chosen to present this as part of their overall package this year. Someone put a lot of thought into um, creating these shots and making it fit with the song. And I want to give them the attention that they deserve for the creativity that they had in putting this together. Even though pre-Eurovision reaction videos are not the same as reacting to Eurovision the event. So I separate them in my own mind. Um, and I want to at least give the music video attention as it relates to the song that they've decided to represent themselves with. So that's why uh, I kind of disagree with that sentiment now, whereas I probably would have been a lot more on that camp of, oh, who cares about the video? Just listen to the song. Even with stage performance itself before, uh, my I would not use the stage performance, the costuming, the lighting, as a factor to judge how I felt about the song because as far as the eternity of the song goes, it's going to be an audio clip more than a video clip for me. Third thought that I know is not a popular one uh, relates to the concept of underwater nudity in general. <laughs> it wasn't that gratuitous to me and I knew to expect it even before I saw it the first time. Um, I had heard that, that was going to be part of it, so it wasn't a shock for me. But um, whereas I think it's supposed to represent this vulnerability um, of him, I, I don't even know. I, it doesn't represent vulnerability to me, which is fine. It, it can be completely valid for him to use that to represent vulnerability. If that means vulnerability to himself, that's fine. But it's nothing is going to come across the same way to literally every single person. For me, the water imagery him being nude in the water represents like returning to the womb. He's in the fetal position a lot. He's um, like, it's clearly meant to represent a fetus in some parts of it, at least. And for me, that makes no sense to represent vulnerability because a fetus in the womb is like literally the safest you will ever be in your life. <laughs> it is the most comfortable, natural place to be when you're in that position. And it's only once you're born that you break out into the world of completely foreign sensations that you suddenly have to learn to breathe for yourself. You have to close yourself. You have to find protection around you because you're not in the safest place anymore. So for me, it actually has the, the opposite impact. <laughs> um, and I know that's a really unpopular opinion. And if you're mad about it, fine. If you disagree, fine. Um, I, I do want to hear your comments, uh, how it struck you the first time you heard it versus how it strikes you now after the hundredth time you've heard it, because some of you have heard it a hundred times. Uh, is this in your top? Do you agree with the polls that are saying it might be a winner? Um, with any opinion, I just ask, please be respectful in the comments. Yes, I know this is YouTube. I know the internet is a place for a lot of hate and, and trolls. But this is Eurovision, and honestly, <laughs> this is a place for love and diversity and understanding. And um, I just want to encourage that as you guys comment, as you just absorb this piece for everything that it says to you and everything that it says to everyone else. <laughs> that said, thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, I apologize that this couldn't be my initial reaction. But I will do my best to, um, you know, maybe I'll spend some money on an actual decent mic sometime. But I'm just doing this for fun. So here we are. Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.